it was a studio we used to go to to voice dub plates. Okay. And he was like, "Yo, I have a rhythm. This is it." And I like, I wrote a song for it. And he's like, "Oh shit!" So I was like, "Baby girl, don't cry no more. <laughs> Tell me, say you can't take the pain no longer." Everybody's like, "Yo, this bad." So baby girl, don't cry no more. Tell me, say you can't take the pain no longer. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. So when it come down to the music, like how did you first get into the music? Like what was what got you into it? Who okay. inspired you? Well, um, Bob Marley inspired me. I wanna love you and treat you right. People like Third World inspired me because they were a group from Uptown area, which my father grew up with, and they knew them. Said it was Um, people like, um, you know, early DJs, like, uh, who can I say? Michigan. Mm -hmm. Michigan and Smiley. People like, you know, um, Shabarang Supercat. And then rappers like Slick Rick. Rakim. Yeah, Rakim a beast. I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. Now I slam it when I'm done and make sure it's pro. Yeah, like, like, uh, Ella Cool J, just the look and the yeah, whole yeah. move to the girls and the suave. And oh, it makes a cat nervous, the thought of settling down, especially me. I was so them type of thing that was, you know, that was my, that's where I found my music as, you know, whatever. But my aunt, to answer your question, my aunt was, my mom's sister, mm -hmm. she was a, a nurse by high school, physical education, she used to teach swimming. And when, at a certain point, she was like, I want I want my own disco. And so she, she have a sound system that's, that's called Sparkle Sound System, Sparkle okay. Disco. They mainly play soca events now. Okay. But back in the day, they were playing everything, all the, latest dance hall, reggae, and pop music. Wow. And they would have parties at, my ma at our house. We lived at our grandmother's house, and it was a big lawn. So they blocked the gate, and they, people paid to come inside. And every Easter, every summer, every Christmas, parties would happen at the house. And everybody knew. So I would have pick up the, 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 the bar and set up the bar in a different place this time, and to put the box over here with the dance floor. How old were you? I was 11. Okay. Right, 10, 11, when she started doing that. Mm -hmm. And we was like, into it. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yo, yeah. this is dope. <laughs> like, <laughs> pick up the box, put it over here. And and so... What kind of music was they playing back then? As I said, the Soca. latest reggae. Soca. okay, yeah. The latest reggae and dance hall and like pop music. Okay, okay. okay. So, so like, they, you know... And we getting some, did you get some disco? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. and the, yeah. the dude who was spinning was a disco era yeah. um, person. But she didn't have nobody come perform or none of that stuff. No, they, but you ever remember a show called Putting on the Hits? Putting on the or, Hits. Or putting on mm -hmm. the Putting on the Hits. So, Who, so what, it was what like, was, what was it, it was on? Before what? MTV, but it was a show on television. Called Putting on that, the Hits. Yeah, that people used to like, you know, um, pretend to be a uh, journey. Okay, okay. And they, they would come out and lip sync. And pre and That's almost like the show that Recently, the um, but it was called the Mad Hits Singer in the eighties. Yeah, wow. And so, so they used to have that like, so if you want to enter, you pay to come to the party, mm -hmm. but you also enter your 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 band. So at like twelve o'clock, they do like a half hour of different people performing, and then one one group wins. Okay. So that was the only performances they had, and I I never at that time thought I would. Yeah, I was yeah. I was a sound man at the time, mm -hmm. you know. And I started learning how to scratch, and I was like, yo, I'm dope for this. Oh, you <laughs> was a DJ, you was doing your thing. Yeah. And then my brother now, with his um, friends, five years younger than me, they started a sound system. Mm -hmm. You know, they save up money, they buy the techniques, they buy the So he's been doing mixer. that a long time. Yeah, he was a kid when he was, he was younger wow. than me. And then I start, I, 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 at about 15 years old, I'm like, mom, I think, I think I want to do music. Like, and she's like, okay, go to go to piano lessons. 
she saved her money and sent me there and I was like I don't want to do this <laughs> so the lady the lady starting to teach me numbers half a note and half a note I'm like yeah I don't I just I hear it I feel it I know that's the thing that's where I want to go with it and and she wasn't letting me feel free with that so yeah, I stopped going yeah, yeah. to my mom's disappointment but I, I begged her to I saw a keyboard in a in an old flea market okay on, in New Kingston mm -hmm. every Sunday they had a Flea market at the Marcus Garvey building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We used to go in there, but it was a it was a Yamaha keyboard, but it was cracked, so it was like yeah, cheaper. Discount. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was like, that one. Cracked. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, we can get that <laughs> one right yeah. there. So she was like, yeah, and then she bought it for like a birthday, or she surprised mm -hmm. me with it, Christmas or something, and then that got me started. It had a four little drum section, so I build over everybody's drums. Do, 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 do. Them bow, them bow, them bow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm good doing it. So, <laughs> so I see Steely and Cleavy on the TV. They are prolific dancehall producers. Okay. And they're like, we don't produce anymore with a band, so to speak. We use this drum machine. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yo. That's what so, I need now. Yes. Yeah, so when I got the keyboard, I I did that for a while, but then I don't know what made the switch happen. Um, I'm still swimming. I'm swimming for Jamaica at the time, but I'm I'm writing songs in my head while I'm swimming. I'm getting lyrics, and I'm like, "Yo, maybe I, maybe I want to try that." And I'm, uh, you know, at the late high school life, one of my friends who was a table tennis champion in in Wilmers, and I was a swimming champion, he starts to, to rhyme, mm. and he goes to studios and gets recorded. And his name is Dan Ute. Oh, okay. So Jason Williams, Dan yeah. Ute, was somebody who did it before me, mm -hmm. went, wow. went, to, mm -hmm. went to the studios and whatnot. So when I left school, he used to have parties and he had one or two records out and he was really popular and known. Right. And um, I used to help him with the parties. I used to help him, you know, get the drinks. I had a, a minivan. So we'd pack all the drinks in there and the van would like, shh, drive to the party, set up, do the same thing I used to do like with my aunt. Right. But then I'm following him to different studios and I'm getting, you know. Learning. He, yeah. I'm, and, and I'm, I go, to, I start going there without him now when, when he's busy or he's gone away. I'm like, I'm going to the studio. So at that time in my life, I'm going to college for hotel management. Okay. I'm 17 or University 19 years University of West old. Indies? No, UTEC. UTEC, so it okay. Was, it was called CAST. Oh, yeah, then. yeah, yeah. I remember. So, so I'm do, I'm, I got him for hotel management, right? Um, it's a three-year course, and, and, and my day consists of going to school, leaving school at like two o'clock. Um, I would go to the stadium, go swim, play water polo, mm -hmm. till nine in the night. Wow. So I'd start training at five, finish about nine, and then after that, I would go to the studios. Mm -hmm. so I'm not coming home until 12.31 in the morning. Wow. And I just keep doing that, doing that, wow. doing that, doing that, doing that, until... The last day, of, the last year of school, I finally get to voice. Somebody's like, "Yo, come!" And I'm like, brruh, brruh. "Who and told like, you that? Who told you to come um, and your voice for um, that?" It, it was a studio we used to go to to voice dub plates. Okay. And he was like, "Yo, I have a rhythm. This is it." And I like, I wrote a song for it. And he's like, "Oh shit!" So I was like. Baby girl, don't cry no more. <laughs> Tell me, say you can't take the pain no longer. Everybody's like, yo, this bad. So baby girl, don't cry no more. Tell me, say you can't take the pain no longer. So it instantly became like, because I, I sound a lot like right. Supercat. He's my mentor in the business. Wow. Somebody That's I look up to. That's what everybody always said that you sound yeah. like him. And so, so it just immediately started. Like, who's this kid? We need him, we need him. So... That was 1996. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.